Hello and welcome to Daily Meditations. I'm Jim Grant and today I'm accompanied by Sister Joanne Bauer and we are so looking forward to share with you for the next two weeks some very beautiful readings. But today we have a special feast, Our Lady of Guadalupe. I think you already knew that. I think all of you have already had your uh, chocolate and you're getting ready to be either praying with Our Lady or you've already been singing Mañanitas already. <laughs> On that note, I think Sister Joanne might be able to get us into the swing of things by reading that opening prayer to the Feast of Our Lady of Guadalupe. O oh God, Father of mercies, who placed your people under the single protection of your Son's Most Holy Mother, Grant that all who invoke the Blessed Virgin of Guadalupe may seek with ever more lively faith the progress of peoples in the ways of justice and of peace. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sister Joanne. That sets up the whole event that we are going to be sharing with you today, the mystery of the greatness of God to make the Virgin Mary present to the Western Hemisphere through this glorious celebration of the Feast of Our Lady of Guadalupe, Empress of the Americas, and also the patronal feast of all of the Western Hemisphere. We have some pictures we want to show you. We have three parishes in our diocese dedicated to Our Lady of Guadalupe. The first one we'd like to show you is in Bakersfield. And you can see the beautiful Porta Misericordiae at Our Lady of Guadalupe, the shrine of Our Lady of Guadalupe, patroness of the unborn. The Gate of Mercy is beautiful for reminding us this year of mercy, which we have just concluded but which we are really needing to keep celebrating all year long. The pastor of that parish is Father Larry Tusky, and I think you know him because he was also up in Madeira at the beautiful parish of St. Joachim. But that's not the only church. We have Our Lady of Guadalupe in Delano, and in Delano it's a beautiful little church, and we want you to know that that parish is also um, suffering through an experience of a fire, so they're in a sense of um, not exactly having everything working the way it had been, but they do have a wonderful Salvadoran priest, Father Campos, Father Miguel Campos. And not to be outdone, there is still one more Our Lady of Guadalupe in the beautiful city of Mendota. And this Our Lady of Guadalupe in Mendota is also shepherded by another Salvadoran priest, Father Miguel, who is um, a musician who was on this set once singing a song that he had dedicated to Oscar Romero, a priest mm -hmm. and a bishop of his diocese of Salvador. We want to wish all of you who are celebrating today the Feast of Our Lady Guadalupe, here's some memories from one of our mm -hmm. processions. Sister, what do you think about that wonderful day when we have those celebrations with all the community down at the cathedral praying to Our Lady? I think it is just so glorious, and it is a sense of family, the family of God. And, you know, one of the things, Jim, that was amazing to me all the years that I've known about Our Lady Guadalupe since being a little child, I never realized that the, the, um, the belt around her was a sign of her pregnancy and that she was indeed pregnant. And how wonderful for right now as we are looking at the birth of Jesus and also the verse of uh, the, those in the um, Hebrew scriptures uh, that precede the Gospels for these days. 
Speaking of pregnancy, why don't you share with us the gospel of the uh, mm. of today, which does remind us of a beautiful event in the life of Mary, which is the gospel of today's feast. A reading from the gospel according to Luke. The angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And coming to her, the angel said, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at what was said and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of David his father, and he will rule over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom, there will be no end. But Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I have no relations with a man? And the angel said to her in reply, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy the Son of God. And behold, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month for her who was called barren. For nothing will be impossible for God. Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. Be it done to me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. You know, before I um, ask you to do a little comment on the gospel, I want to read something from my favorite pope right now. That would be Pope Francis. Something that he said when he was in Mexico City. As you all know, the pope spent six marvelous days in Mexico, all because... He wanted to go to Mexico City to pay tribute to Our Lady of Guadalupe, one of his favorite, favorite um, Madonnas. Here's what the Pope said. How could I not come? Could the successor of Peter, called from the far south of Latin America, deprive himself of seeing La Virgen Morenita? Just as she made herself present to little Juan, so too she continues to reveal herself to all of us, especially those of us who feel like her or like him, worthless. This choice, this preferential option, was not against anyone, but rather in favor of everyone. The little Indian Juan who called himself a leather strap, a back frame, a tail, a wing, oppressed by another's burden, became the ambassador most worthy of trust. I see we only have 30 seconds, so when we come back tomorrow, Sister Joanne and I will share some readings, not about the feast that we just did, but another great feast, St. Lucy. Stay tuned. I hope that you're enjoying your Advent season and that you're finding not only this meditation, but also the rosary, and the masses that we offer for you, a chance to really get into the spirit of the Advent season, the anticipation of the Lord being present among us. God bless.